I'm Aidan Rades Baltoña. I'm a postdoc here in the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, and I work um, on ancient pathogens. Um, and I think that should be more <laughs> of an introduction. And basically, now what we're going to do is this is going to be a bit more practical than the first part. So I will appreciate if you guys can start, can run the commands when I'm going through. And if you get stuck or something doesn't work properly, just go to Thesis and ask or raise your hand and stop me at any time and ask questions. There is no problem at all for doing that. So, yeah, so this is the second session. Uh, one second, I need to find my other, yeah. So in this session, it basically what we're going to do is to get a bit more familiar with text modifications and working with files and ordering directories and making your system a bit more tidy. And to do that, we're going to see how we can find stuff in our system, what are for loops and why loops, and why these are very useful when you want to perform actions that actually are repeated in multiple files. We will look at regular expressions, which are super useful, and you will use them all of the time while you are coding. Um, we also are going to learn how to write um, conditional statements. So basically, if we want to look for specific stuff in certain files or if files exist, you can always use conditionals in your code. Um, we also going to do some simple text modifications with set, which is a super powerful tool. and um, I'm just going to give you the basics, but it should get you started to do a bit more complex stuff. And then if we have time, which I'm not sure because it depends how the session goes, we're going to see a bit of how to write a simple bash script. And then I will give you some tips of how to debug and write your code um, for making a bit more complex scripts. So we're going to start by doing some witchcraft and to prepare yourselves, what we need to do first is you go back to the directory that you created in the first session by doing cd, then again a relative path, um, bare bones bash, and you should be in the folder. And if you do an ls command, you should see that you have the, this, this file that you created before that contained um, like it, metadata that we're going to use to actually sort the images in a, a very messy uh, folder that one of your collaborators can actually send you. And so let's download this messy folder from your collaborator. And for that, you will need to. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, so yeah, first you have to download this folder by running this command. Um, and when you guys are done, raise your hand so we can see that you all have the file on your systems. Okay, someone already has it. Perfect. Okay, so I'll wait another minute or so, so everyone has it. And if you have problems, if you if you don't have to write the whole command, you can actually download. Um, Get the slides already on the website. I sent you before the link. I can send it again. So you guys just copy and paste it. Remembering that uh, you shouldn't copy the dollar sign. Yeah, here I sent in the chat the, the the website with all the slides, and if you scroll down, you should see day two, day one, and at the very bottom the session that we are now. Okay, so I will continue. Um, 
if someone had a problem or you still don't have the file, please let Theseus know. So what we have downloaded is actually a zip file, which you can see here by the ending of the file. And what the first thing that we will need is to unzip it. This is something that you usually, um, when you get data from other people, it's usually in a format that is reduced, so it occupies less space. Um, and that you can, yeah, there is a different ways of doing that. In this case, this is what's just done by zipping the file. And what you will do is run unzip and then the name of this folder and it will unzip it. Is everyone, yeah? So. Yeah, so if you do that, it will print a lot of stuff in the screen. Okay, so if everyone is ready, then let's make a start by going back to the, the, the directory. I think maybe you are already there. You can see that by looking at, um, by doing what the command that uh, Theseus showed you before, like this pwd. Um, and yeah, so basically what we're gonna start by doing now is to look for our stuff. This is just the outline, is, is what I said before, we're gonna look first what a, a for loop is, how we can rename stuff, what are regular expressions, what are while loops, um, how to write conditionals, and modifying some, and we modifying some files with set and also paste. Um, so the first thing that we want to show you is how to find your stuff. And actually there is find, which, uh, helps you to do that. It, help, it helps you look for in all of you uh, in a folder that you specify and it does, it looks on all the layers in that folder. So it goes actually deep into the structure. The first part that you're gonna give to this command, can I go there? No, okay. Oh, yeah, here we are. So the first part that you're gonna put in your command will be the directory where you would like to start looking for. You can indicate it with a dot if you want to look in the current directory that you are, or you can give it an absolute path, which will be useful to get the, abs the absolute path of the files that you're gonna look for. You can also use this if you want to look at your home directory, or as I said, an absolute path, which will be very useful to... Yeah, okay, I stop. For a second. What do you need? Okay, should I put the slide back up with the... So some people are having problems with the download, so we're gonna stop here for a second. We have it there now, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so. so maybe a slight tangential comment here. Uh, if you ever have to teach bioinformatics and you have to down, get lots of people to download things at once, mm -hmm. try to get them to stagger it. Otherwise, the website may think you're DDoSing them and will block your access, speaking from experience.
Yeah. Okay. I just don't want you to get too far through the music mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's recapitulate. So we have this command, which is find, which allows us to look for files and directories that are hidden in layers of layers of a very organized directories. Um, so the first part of this command um, is what? Okay, is that a problem? Um, so yeah, so the first part is uh, the place where you want to start looking at. You can give it a directory. You can specify dot if you want to start looking for where you from where you are. You could start by looking at your home with this relative path, or you could actually use absolute path, which is what I always like. I tend to do because I want to know where the files that I'm looking at are um, from the beginning of my structure, which I I like it because then it can be used for your scripts and it, your, the computer won't tend to get lost when trying to perform other actions. The second part is this type part. And in this part, you can specify what are you looking for? Are you looking for a file and you will write an F or are you looking for a directory or a folder and you will write a D. And then the last part um, will be what do you want to find for? Which name should it be looking for? And in our case, um, we're gonna be looking for uh, our images. And the only thing that we know is that it contains GPG and we are gonna use wildcard. So it's what the thesis was talking about, this asterisk, which means match anything. Doesn't matter a character or a number, match anything. And we're gonna surround our name by these two wildcards because we don't know what our collaborator is sending us other than it contains this uppercase GPG. So if you run now this command, you should get, it should find a bunch of files. Do people get to see a bunch of files printed on the screen? Yeah, someone see them. Yeah, perfect. Okay, um, we can also look um, for, we can use variables to look for stuff. So for example, now if we had, we create a variable called suffix that contains GPG, we can then use it in our find command. So please try to run this following command and let me know what happened. You can either unmute yourselves or write it on the chat. What are you guys seeing on the screen? Is something happening? Okay, so nothing will found, was found, James. <laughs> nothing was found, and this is because of something that we saw before. If you try now to run it this way, You guys should see a lot of files again coming up. And why is that? It's because of something that this just told you before, is that when we are using single quotes, we are, Bash is not interpreting them. So he's just trying, in this case, the find command is gonna try to look for something that has this 
pattern. So any character, a dollar sign, suffix, and then any character. And of course, we don't have any of these in our uh, folder structure. Um, but if we are giving it with double quotes, we are actually going to find them because then it's, it's Bash looks for this and says, oh, I have to interpret it that. And in this suffix variable, we had actually saved GPG. So now we are finding the file. So basically, this command is equivalent to what we saw at the beginning. And it's useful to pass some variables because then you can, um, for when you do a script, you can use this variable to, to find for multiple stuff and people can modify it as this is said before, it's easy to modify. So it's very nice for when you are doing a bit more complex scripting. Okay, so if you um, succeeded at running at this fine command, you saw that all of the files were saved with this ending. It's it's supposed to be an image, it's supposed to be a JPEG image, but you are finding that your collaborator, for whatever reason, decided to give it this ending, which makes no sense and actually complicates you to open these files any other way that you want. So let's do some cleanup and then we will sort these images into categories in nice folder structure instead of that mess of subfolders that you saw there, the paths are very long and very messy and you don't even know where to find anything. There is a question. Uh, would you say it's safer to use double quotes then? Yes, I will always use double quotes, particularly when working with variables. There, there are some cases where you specifically don't want the variable to be um, mm. interpreted so something else further down the line can interpret it but those are rare generally double quotes are yeah exactly um so how do i how can we repeat multiple times um to do a thing and for that we will use what is known as for loops so for loops will go through a list of things and perform some actions so let's look at an example here so our variable here is yes, and then we have a for loop, which is written like this. Um, so for element i, you can name this whatever you want, um, in our list. So here we have a list oops, with three elements, Greece, Spain, and Britain. <laughs> you can, it, it's telling it to do something. And then what it's going to do is going to print with echo those i, which now it's going to be one of these um, elements on the list, have lovely food, and then the variable. And then we're telling it, OK, once you've done this, please just stop and don't do anything else. Um, and in here, you can see what this is, was talking about, this more than sign. This is just how it's going to look when you, um, when you do that in your command line. but or you should now copy each of these lines separately because if not, it's not gonna run. And when you do that, then you get does Chris have lovely food? So the first element in the list was Chris, and then it's saying, okay, for Chris have lovely food and the variable, yes. Does Spain have lovely food? So the second element and then the third element written. So you have done the same action for the three um, elements that were in your list which is, uh, there's a here again the explanation. So the for loop was going through the list, Greece, Spain, and Britain, and then it printed the statement for each of these items. And now we can use this concept to actually clean our um, structure. So how can we do it for removing this weird ending? So first I'm gonna show you um, an example that uses cut and ref, which is, seems to be the favorite from James. Um, I, so I usually don't do it this way, but it's a very nice way to understand um, how can we do that on the start paths. So do you have any guesses of what this cut and ref uh, commands might do? Please write it on the chat. Um, if you have any guesses what cut might do or what ref might do.
yeah, so people are guessing right. So cut, cut something, and then uh, Dref reverses it. So exactly what we will expect them to do. Um, so to make it a bit more clear, so for example, here we say echo um, this string. So if we do a ref, it will reverse it. As you can see, it's the reverse of this string. We can use cut, um, but you need to specify certain stuff. So minus D is the limiter. So what is separating each of your um, character, like each of your words, um, and F is which field do you wish to cut? So if we do now echo the string that we had before, please cut at the delimiter space and give me the second field, you will get the numbers. If you change it that to one, then you will get the beginning, so the letters here. So we can use this to basically um, clean up our files. So here it is, so for file in, our find command that finds uh, all the files. It's gonna create a new name here, which basically I will go through what this is done and then do echo. And if you guys run this without uncommenting this, you should see the new names that we will give to the files. Do you see the new names? So what happened when you did this uh, dry run? Did it actually remove something from your file names? I'm gonna assume that you guys see something, but if you are seeing um, that it's removing the last bit, so the .txt, then please, um, remove the hash, which this will uncomment this line. So it was, it's telling now the program, the way that it's written now, it's telling the program, please don't run this. This is just a comment, something that I write for myself. But if you remove this hash, then this part will be executed, which we're gonna be moving our file that was in, in the list to the new name. Um, if someone has problems, please, um, let's see, yes, no. I will wait 30 seconds and then I will continue. So the dollar sign shouldn't be copy at all. So you just should copy this part here. You will have to copy each line separately with the, of the dollar sign at the beginning. I think it's the dollar the, oh. dollar the dollar suffix, really? Hmm. Interesting. Did that work for me? Yeah, it also worked for me when I tried. Could you send it through the chat and see if that will work? You should also be able to just do shift four to type in a dollar or whatever it is on your keyboard, I suppose. Yeah, that should work. I don't see why you specifically like somebody. Hmm. Okay. Um. Do you think I should wait or should I put it in my room? Mm. Very strange. Mm. 
would you like to go and have yes. a bubble so, so you can so figure it out? Yes. So, uh, Nora, can you come to the white room with me? Then you can share your screen and I can see what's going on. Okay, well, I will continue a bit. Um, so, what am I? Okay, we can see that this uh, code, you should go as well, um, sorry. <laughs> um, so you can see that this code is a bit convoluted. It's not so easy to read. Um, so let's go step by step to see what we are doing in this line, particularly this line here, which is a bit too long and difficult to understand. So as before, this is telling, um, so when you write this, so dollar and parentheses, what Bash knows is that it has to run whatever command is within this parentheses. So in this case, we are using this for assigning whatever is in this um, parentheses to our um, variable new name. So this is basically this part here. So you can see we are having new name and then we are saying this will equal whatever is in this command here. Um, so we start out with this uh, file path and then we tell it, okay, now reverse it. So what the program is doing is reversing it. And then we are telling it, okay, cut the string by the delimiter dot. So here we'll find one, two, three, and four. Um, so one, two, three, and four. Um, different words in theory or parts of your string and then it's telling it to keep anything that is after the second field so the second field until nine 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 hundred ninety nine so all all the strings after the first one so at the end you will end up without the first uh, part of this which will be the dot txt and then we're gonna reverse it again so at the end we, we will end up with new name being assigned this path where now we have removed the dot txt at the end and then what we do is then we are renaming the file to this new name that we have created with move so as you can see you have to think a bit of what this code is doing and we saw before that with parameter expansion this is much more easy so we can actually change this code to a very smaller and much nicer code where you know what it's doing. So we are saying, again, this list here, echo our file here. This is what we mm, call a dry run. So here we are just actually checking that we are doing the right thing. So please, for each of the files that is in this list, print um, the variable modified, which in this case is what this has showed you before will remove anything from the last dot. And if you do a write down from both, you will see that they, they are very different as well in time. Um, so I'm just gonna show you that the, the first code takes actually 0 0.05 seconds while the second code takes a much less time. This might seem right now like nothing, but when you have to perform this for a lot of files, it will actually add up and the second code is much more efficient at performing your task. And if you are in a system where each of the time um, counts as money, you're gonna be saving your PI a lot of money. So probably they're gonna be happy that you are having an, a quite efficient code. So if you, is that a question? And someone unmute themselves. So now, please, um, if you can check that this actually does what we would like to do. So this should remove the dot pm pm mp3. Um, if it, it is doing this, please rem uncomment the lines of the move and then move the files to the new name, which now it should only contain dot gpg at the end. And if you are done, please uh, raise your hand and then I will continue. Okay. Um, just as a reminder, uh, I was away, so I saw miss the, the comments. If you're trying to copy and paste, I recommend if you have it using 
uh, opening the VM, the, the compute node in Chrome, because that should normally give you the ability to pay straight away. If you're using Firefox, there is uh, instructions on the website under the what section of the 2022 uh, edition. We should tell you how to do it, how to um, edit it. I think there is a, a link higher up in the chat as well. Could you tell that to Theseus? So I'm not sure if anyone raised their hands, but you could do it again so I can actually see if people are managing to run this. Okay, so some people are managing, that's good. No, I see some shaky meds. <laughs> So what are the problems? What is people encountering? So if someone didn't manage to create these new file names, um, please get in touch with this yes. I will continue for the sake of time. Um, but yeah, so what we should see is that um, we have now renamed to everything to GPT. Um, I'm not sure who has unmuted their, there is unmuted, but please, if you could mute yourselves, thank you. Um, so yeah, so now what we can see is that our suffix is dot uh, gpg, but is actually in uppercase, and usually you write this in lowercase. So let's lowercase it. And for doing that, um, we can actually use what it is known as regular expressions. And we can actually do it without a for loop, which I will show you after. So regex is an important concept, as I said before, and you will find them in most of the programming languages. And although the syntax can vary from language to language, um, they are rather similar, but you should always check with the specific language that you are using. And in here, we are only showing how they work in Bash. So this might not be portable to another language, just be aware of that. Um, so regular expressions, what are they? They are special strings and characters that can help you search for a specific pattern. Um, they can be used for searching, searching and replace, um, like it will work in Excel. And you have been already using them. Um, within your find command, you already use regex with this, uh, with this asterisk. Um, this is actually a, a regex uh, pattern. So. To look for this part, um, could you please uh, download this file here from the system and then you will have to move it um, to regex.txt. Um, and when you guys are done, I'll again raise your hand so I can gauge more or less how many people have. Hmm. So I see some messages. Um, OK, 
Okay, so read. It is still GPG that I have you okay so i see that some people still have a manage um have still uh, the other ending have you run the first command uh with the move uncommented because then that will create that you still have um the dot mp3 and if not what you could do is run um let me just put it back again you could run again this command without the hash you have to remove this hash because if not, uh, this will be read as a comment and Bash will say, okay, this is a comment for the person. I'm not going to do anything, so I'm not going to interpret it. And then it should remove the MP3. Good. Um, so let me just put back again. Again, let me know if you have downloaded the file by raising your hands. Okay, I can see some people raising hands. Okay. Great, I think that's a lot of people raising their hands. So I will continue. And if you had problems, I will just leave the link on the chat and you guys can download it. Right. Um, so in this file, if you cut it, you will see that you have a lot of words. And now we're going to see how we can actually look for a specific words in within this file using regex. So before we start, there is three special characters within regex, which we could put them in categories. So dot, star, um, the hat, and the dollar, these are special characters that are translated by regex functions first. So this means that they are always interpret and we will see which one of them, what they mean. But if you want to look for these characters, you need to escape them with um, this backslash because if not, they will just be interpreted as special characters. Then there is the letter base special characters and this must have the backslash to be translated because if not, they are read as letters. Um, and we will see also what each of them mean. And then there is also the square brackets and the round brackets and other ones. That is what we call uh, grouping or capturing. Um, and this, what they will do is that within these square brackets or in the round brackets, they will be uh, included different characters that they will be all used for looking uh, for the specific pattern. And maybe this sounds complicated, but we are going to see examples. Um, so, and if anything is unclear, just let me know and I will go through this again. So, as I said, what is in this file is a collection of words. So, let's try to look through these words with different regexes. Okay, so, I see a lot of raised hands. Is everyone having issues or did you ask something? No, we are just, uh, I was, so I can gauge if people have downloaded the stuff or not. Okay, well, anyone who needs help with stuff, just go in the white room and I'll join you, okay? All right, so let's see the first one. So if we are using grep, grep is a program that actually allows you for looking for specific regexes. Um, if we use grep and we put dot ear and then look in the file regex.txt, what we will find will be hair, bear, and rear. And this is because the dot means match any character. It doesn't matter what it is, but match it one at least. So in this case, it match anything that finishes with ear. So you should see printed in your screen if you run this command. You should only see pair, bear, and rear. Is that the case? Are people raising their hands? Please raise your hands. Can you see if this is? Because I cannot see. It. Um, there are raised hands, but. I don't, okay, yes, more and more people are in the hands. Cool, so 
that that work out. So the second one will be like these square brackets, which I said before, these are grouping characters. So in here we are telling it, okay, for in this file, please look by anything that starts with a P and contains either an I, an E, or an A, and then an R. And if you run this, you should see peer, pair, and par. And if you do, please raise your hand. Okay, I can see some hands, perfect. Okay, so what about if we put a hat within these square brackets? So this is now telling it, okay, within this range of characters, please uh, print out anything that does not contain either an I, an E, or an A, and it starts with a P and it ends with an R. So if you do that, you only should see a single R word, which is per. And if you raise your hands, if this is correct, Great. And then let's see that we want to match zero or more of one item, of one character. So for this, we will use this asterisk or like star, I don't know how it is said in English. Um, so it, here it, what it's telling it is, please look for something that starts with a B. It has an, it might or might not have an E and then an R. And if you do that, you should see beer, um, bear, and bear. And as before, raise your hands if you actually see this printed on your screen. I see lots of hands, perfect. Um, okay, and then as I said, now we want to look for this asterisk star. So since this is a special character that will always be interpreted by regex, what we have to do is to skip this character by putting a bash a slash. So now what we are telling the program, the, the regex is telling is look for a B, look for an E, look for a star and look for an R. So we only have a single match in this file, which will be exactly what we are telling it to look for. So if we
too much. But um, there is websites that allow you to actually write some regex and try out of what they will do. And one of such websites is this regex. 101.com and this will be on the website uh, under resources so you can do that and then you can uh, write your regex there and see what this will match um, and it, it also has explanations of what each of the symbols actually mean and how to use them so this is a very useful website when you are trying to do a bit more complex um, regex operations okay so, so let's practice so what regex will you use now to find any any file that ends with dot gpg can you write it on the chat there is multiple answers so <laughs> okay so i see that someone has written only a, a star this will find something that has everything on it um yeah so we will actually use our find command to find the files as before and our regex which as i told you already have been using them our regex now will be anything and that it has to finish with the gpg um so if you have done that now you will see all of the files that we have actually renamed before Okay, and now let's say that before we use this complex stuff to move them, to remove stuff, but there is a very useful command, which is um, rename, which actually gets a regex and applies it to all of the files that you have and actually renames them. So that it moves them for you to the new name. Um, and if we do this, so find in our folder, anything that is a file that finished with .gpg. And we have a pipe here that you saw before. So this is telling, OK, all of the output of this command, please send it to rename. And here we have our regex. Um, yeah, so in our regex, we have it's telling with s, which means substitute. Um, the we have to skip the dot so skip so the dot so this will be dot gpg at the end of the um uh, line and you were going to substitute to gpg lowercase and if you do that um yeah so here is the explanation that i said so the s will substitute the it will find anything that finish that ends so indicated by the dollar sign that is by dot gpg and it will substitute it by dot gpg in the second part we don't need to skip the dot because uh, the second part of the substitute command is always interpret as it is so it doesn't matter if you put special characters only the first part is what is actually being interpreted as a regex so as this special set of characters that will be um, used for search um, for this pattern so if we now do again this command here with our new suffix.gpg, you guys should see that you have the correct um, files all finishing with .gpg. And if you do, please raise your hand so I can see that this has actually worked. OK, some raised hands. That's great. Yeah, great. So before we continue, is there any questions until now that people would like to ask? You can write them in the chat if you're a bit nervous of talking. Okay, it doesn't seem to be the case. So, okay, so we have now our nice named files and now we want to sort them in categories. And to do that, we need to uh, keep track of all the files and then we will gather all this information by using a redirect. So what we saw in the first session. 
So if we do, if you guys now run this, what this is command is doing is it's finding all of our files that end with our suffix uh, gpg and it's saving it the output of this command is being saved into file names.txt and if you cut into uh, this file you should see that you have all of the paths to all of your um, images that you had in that messy folder structure and if this is the case please raise your hand again Okay, I can see some hands. Great. Um, so I want to show you two very useful commands. Um, and these are the first um, one is base name. And what this actually does, it actually strips anything that has um, that is a path and only leaves you with the file name. So if you do base name on this path, which is, it was one of, your, of the images that there was in the beginning in the structure, it will only give you the file name, which is this bubobubo.gpgmp3.txt. If on the opposite, you would like to know the directory where this file is, you can use dir name. So if you do the name, the same path, it gives you exactly the opposite. It gives you all the path until this file. And this is very useful and we are gonna be using it now to basically make all this structure go away and to have a nicely um, structure where you will have your images sorted by the category that they correspond. So for doing that, we're gonna be reading from a file and we're gonna be using a while loop. And this while loop is again is a is a part of the code that will allow you to repeat a code inside until this is interrupted. And we will also use read, which actually reads the context of a file uh, into a specific variable. So if we see here, um, we're gonna make a directory called images, and we're gonna do a while loop here. So while read this file path do it's the same sort of syntax as our for loops so you are telling it while you are reading this file path um, you put a semicolon do the following actions and in this case we are doing again we are doing a write run to see that we are doing what we want it to do so it's going to read our file path so this will be here and then it's going to do images base name, which basically is gonna give you the name of the file and as file path. And what, and then what it's telling it is do done and it's gonna be reading. So in this case, we are re redirecting int into the command. So this is what uh, thesis was called the standard input. So in here we are telling it, okay, get these file names and put it within this while loop. It's a bit complicated. So these file names, is gonna go okay people are still seeing my screen because i'm seeing someone's yeah. screen so okay. okay. yeah so we're gonna get this txt file and it's putting it within the read command that is within the uh while loop and it's reading line by line so this file path is gonna be a one line so the first one will be the first line then the second the third the fourth blah 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 until the end of our file um so if you try it out um you should see um the original file path and then the one that you will create within the images if that's the case please raise your hands yeah, I see some of those hands, great. Oh yeah, some microphone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so since the people managed to do that, so if, if it works like we will expect, so you will have only the name um, in within images 
then you can uncomment the move command and what it will do is actually move your files within these images with the proper name so without any uh, folder in between and when you're done please raise your hand so i can continue okay All right, did this work out with for people? Since this takes a bit longer and I seem um, to be running a bit too fast, I'm gonna uh, pause here for a bit um, and maybe I will explain why do we use this base name. So in here, what we want is that actually our files are safe in a way that they don't have all these middle structures. So we will just want to save it as the name of the original file. So we use base name. So this will remove all the path before and just give us the nice name that we had for our files. Um, so this is a way that now we, we could um, clean up our directory by creating a new one. And I think this is a, a good practice to do. So whenever you have a very messy directory that you don't know anymore, what is in there or what you put in. And I would recommend that you start a new directory, fresh clean, and you think of a nice structure that you're gonna understand in the future and then move the, the, the important files within this structure and then get rid of the old directory because it will help you to understand what you, what you have done before. Um, Will that be enough one? Okay, so I'm gonna just go through what this while loop exactly does. So for the for loop, we saw that the for loop, what it does is to go through a list and actually do some um, some commands within, so do some actions within each of these elements of the list. While loops, on the other hand, are infinite. So they won't stop doing stuff until certain condition is met. So what this means is that um, it will evaluate every time. So it will check that this statement um, fulfills certain conditions. So while it is true, it will continue running. And that's why we call it an infinite. So for example, in this case, we have n equals three. Don't run this. This is just pseudo code to explain what a while loop is. So don't, you don't need to run it. Just um, look and see if you understand the concept behind. So if n equals three, we're gonna do this while n is bigger than zero. And if this actually is true, so n is more than zero, we will print the value of n and then we will change the value of n minus one. And then we will stop. So in this case, first is three, then it's two, then it's one, then it will become zero. And because this n is zero and it's not bigger than zero, the loop stops. So here we, it, it has stopped because it has met certain condition. Now, what happens if this is not actually happening? So let's the same code. So n equals three, but now we are telling it, you will run this code every time that n is smaller than five. So, so and for this, you will echo n, and then you will do n minus one. But what will happen is that this condition will never be false. So if you keep subtracting one from three, it will never become more than five. So this will run forever. And if you ever create an infinite loop within your system, 
you need to kill it. So you need to stop it because it will never stop. Um, so for the, that, you can use control plus C, and this will cancel this loop, so it will kill it. And so it doesn't continue running. So what happened in our example from the beginning? So the condition in our example is read file paths. So this command is reading one line at a time. So once it reaches, there is no more lines in the file, it will stop. So this actually ensures that this condition will become false at some point. So when there is no more lines, there is nothing to do. I'm just stopping, so I'm not doing anything else. And that's what happening here. Yes. Um, there is someone that is unmuted. Yeah. This is a reminder, guys. After you've had your uh, tech support session with Theseus, always make sure to stop sharing your screen and your uh, mute yourself because it it uh, doesn't automatically turn off when you leave. Sorry, I should have made that clear. Okay. Um. Yeah. So now let's look again at this uh, file that we had from the first session. Um, so I have not a uh, screenshot, but if you cut this file, you will see that you have um, a column with a category and A and whatever. And we're gonna use this meta file to sort our images by categories because we want to know from which animal each of these images are. So for doing that, we can actually put together our files and the list in the metadata file. And for doing that, you can do a paste. So if you do ls, so if you run this command, you will see that it literally gets the contents of the file boosted pbbmeta.txt and, and next to it, it puts the images so the name of the image that they are within the folder and if you see that please raise your hand so i know that people are reaching yay see some hands So yeah, so this is exactly what you should be seeing. So images and then the name of the image, this name, uh, a letter, and then an adjective at the end. What I have to say is that paste literally gets the contents of your file and put them together. It doesn't do any cross check if the columns match, it just puts them together. So you have to be very wary when you do that that, you, that the two files are properly configured so that each line contains the information that you want. So in this case, we, it, it worked because we had ordered our file in a way that actually they went together. But this is normally not the case, so be very careful when you're using paste. It just puts them together. It doesn't look how, um, if they match or not. So if this work, um you can uncomment um the last bit of the command and then we will save um this into a files call and in a file called annotations.txt and when you're done again raise your hand
Okay, I think I'll, like half of the people have reached here. Um, if you need a bit more time, please write it in the chat. If not, I will just continue. I wait one more minute. Okay. So just in case that I'm going too fast or that you are not reaching while I'm explaining, you don't have to panic. We have a full flesh out session on the website. So just uh, try to listen and understand the concepts and then you can run through it at any time at your own will with the one on the website where there's gonna be a bit more of also explanations. Um, the problem that we had is that we, this course is thought to be taken much more longer. So we've tried to put all the concepts within four hours when before we were taking two full days to go through them. Um, and there is a, a, at the end of the, um, of this presentation, I've included a link of our website where there is a full um, explanation and all the slides with all everything in them. So you can actually go through them, even if it's not now within the session that it's happening now. We know that there's a lot of information, but it's also super useful. Like for me, I still go to our bare bones bash tutorial and actually look at the parameter expansions that we did there because sometimes I also forget stuff. So don't, don't panic if you don't reach when I'm actually moving along. If you get lost at some point, just try to listen and and try to understand the concepts. You don't need to really make it with me. But I hope that everyone has reached to the annotations text. Um, so now what we want to do is to use this to sort our files into actual categories. But what we see is that in these annotations files, we have A, B, C, so we don't really know what these categories are. So now we're gonna use set to actually edit our file. And as I said, set is, um, is what is called stream editor and it's very powerful. It allows you to give it a regex and perform actions on the, on the file on the fly. So for example, if you run this command, set substitute a by doc in the annotation files. Don't worry if you run it like this, it's only gonna show you in the data, in in, in the terminal is not gonna modify your file. So if you do that, you should see that actually it has changed any uppercase A, so this is your regex part by doc, which it's not exactly what we wanted to do because it has changed now one of our uh, file names to doc and we wanted to have an A here. It has also done what we wanted to do, which was um, change A by dog. So, oops, let's try to see what we can do. So it only changes the A. And for that, doing that, we need to be a bit more specific in our regex. So we will run now this. And what this is doing is like substitute anything that has a tab. Our file was tab separated a tab, an A, and a tab. So the A has to be surrounded by tabs and now substitute it. So after this backslash by tab, dog, tab. And if we do that, now we see that um, the first file that was actually changed by dog contains now the A like we wanted and it only has changed the A's for dog, which is exactly what we wanted. Do people see this? 
If so, please raise your hand. Okay. Great. Um, while the others are continuing to run it, um, now we are working on a Linux system and usually the set that is there, it recognizes the tab. But if you are working on a Mac, um, it won't recognize the, this as a tab. So you will have to literally type in a tab character within your set command, which is a bit annoying, but this is just how it is. So we can also provide this flag minus E. And these allow us to give different substitutions and that will be run within the same command. So for example, here in this command, which is cut, sorry. So in, within this command that you cannot see the end of it, but it's actually the annotations.txt file. We, we are telling it, okay, perform three substitutions, each of them proceeding with a minus E. The first one, it is what we already saw, so it will substitute any A surrounded by tabs, by dog, with the tabs again. And this is important that we put the tabs again, because if not, our file will be broken and it won't have this nice structure anymore. Then in the second one, we know that the letter B is actually encoding cut, so we are doing exactly the same. So for any B that is surrounded by tab characters, please substituted by cut, surrounded by, cap, uh, by tab characters. And then the next one will be substitute C, and we know that C is bird, so C surrounded by tab characters will be substituted by bird with tab characters around it. And if you do that, you will see that each of the letters that we had on the third column will we now have the category that we wanted. And if you see this, now you can actually modify this file. And you do that by putting a dash i in your command. And this is telling set, OK, I want you to do this substitution within the file. So when you are um, saving it, it will be saving it in annotations.txt. And you will have done your modification in the file without having to create a new file. Um, so when people reach to here, please uh, raise your hands. And for this command here, um, remember that you cannot see it completely, but it actually has annotations.txt at the very end. Unfortunately, you cannot see it. OK, I see some hands up. I'll wait for a second here until people reaches. Hmm? I'm not muted. Hmm? Okay, so now we have a nice metadata file with our categories. And now we're gonna write, let's do a bit of cleaning up. So let's organize stuff. And for doing that, we can use what, we, what is known as conditional. So we can test that certain criteria are met before we do something. And this will be, the most basic ones will be if or else statements. So, this is how you will write it. So the basic syntax is like, if my variable equals banana, then say monkey takes a banana and rides away happy. 
And if that is not true, then Redis Monkey doesn't want that. So if you try to run this and your variable is not set, what it's going to do is print that Monkey doesn't want that. We can also add another condition. So first it will evaluate if your variable equals banana. And if that is true, it will run monkey takes a banana and runs away happy. Let's say that this is not met. So the next thing it will check will be the next else if. So now it checks, is the variable mango? If it's yes, then it will print monkey takes a mango and it is while staring, I don't know what. Um, and if this, none of this is true. So if your variable is neither banana nor mango, what it will do is look at the else. So this is something that is always run um, if the conditions are not met, it will run monkey doesn't want, we will print monkey doesn't want that. Um, and this is very useful. And there is different behaviors to these brackets. Um, so I'm not gonna go into what it will mean if it only had a single bracket, but just so you know, it is double brackets behave different than one bracket in some cases. So I, what we recommend is that you always use the double brackets because this is usually what you want it to evaluate. You can also test mathematical equations and for this you will use the round brackets. So let's say that now you want to check if five minus two equals three, um, then you will have to write it with the double brackets. And of course the answer of this is yes. Um, you can also use the um, question, no. I'm not sure how they call that in English, but uh, the excla ah, exclamation mark, there we go. To say it, okay, I don't want this to be, I want the opposite of this. So let's say um, we had the, the, pre the previous conditional where it's checking if five minus two equals three, then print yes. Um, but if, Uh, exclamation mark. So if not uh, 5 minus 2 equals 3. So in this case, this is a yes, right? So 5 minus 2 equals 3. That is true. But we don't want that it is true. We want the opposite. So when this is true, do the else. So it's echo no. Um, so yeah. So you can use this to tell it I want the opposite of, of the whatever is here. Um, there is also in, um, some flags that allowed you for check if a file exists or if a file has no length at all. So for example, with the minus F, we are checking if our file exists. So if you, if you run this conditional, it should print file exists. And you can try it out and raise your hand if this is actually true. Yeah, so I see some hands. So of course, we created this file, so it should exist. Um, and then we can also check if a variable is set. So if we do if, uh, minus n, so this minus n is actually checking if a variable is set or not. As banana, then it will, if it's true, so if we have something stored within banana, it will print echo variable is set. And if we, and if this condition is not met, then it will print variable is not set. So if you try now running this condition, and I'm assuming that you don't have banana set, then it should print that variable is not set. And you can play with this if you want and set banana and see if actually the um, conditional changes and actually prints variable is set. I will give you a few minutes for doing this and then I will continue.
Okay. So we can also test more than one condition. So we can test that two things can be met with an, two or more things. We can put as many as these ands. Or that something, it can be this or the other. And you can use the double pipe for that. So here we have some examples. So if you run this, it will check if life universe equals 42, which is true. And it has to meet also this. So it has to be that hitchhikers equals awesome. In our case, it's yes. So then you can print don't panic. In the other hand, we can do also an or. So now let's say that life of universe, life universe, everything is 41 and hitchhikers are awesome. Then it says, okay, if life of universe equals 42, that it is not true, so this is false, or hitchhikers are awesome, so here this is true. So since one of them, it is actually true, it doesn't matter that the other one is false since we are doing an OR, then it will still print, still don't panic. And you are free, feel free to play with this on your own time and see how um, it changes with an and OR. But now we're going to continue because there is a bit more um, to go through. Um, so if you haven't reached three here, um, please just listen. Um, because I, I want to reach um, the part of the scripting which will be very useful for, for you guys. So we are now trying to order each of the images by their category. So we go back to our boosted BBB folder and now we're gonna do a while loop here. So while read line do something and we are reading the annotations.txt file. So it is reading this file here. And then what the first line is doing is actually it, it prints the line and it cuts the first um, field. So in this case, the image name will correspond to the first field. So it will be here. And then the animal will do the same, but it will get the, th the third um column which will be our categories from our annotations file and if you run this the whole while loop you should actually see the image and the category to where they correspond so if you reach here just raise your hands Yeah, I'm, I'm not muted now. <laughs> okay, so have you guys reached here? Do you do you see this? Okay, I see some people raising their hands, so let's continue. So now we're gonna make a directory for each of the animals that we have in the categories. And for doing that, we're gonna run this um, make directory images and then our animal that we had stored in in this variable and you can see here the minus p flag this will create any substructure within the directory that doesn't exist so this is 
useful when you are creating more than one folder. So you don't need to create first images and then animal, even though we already had created images. But in case that this didn't exist, it will create it also for you. Um, and now, once we've done that, we're going to do some conditionals, as we saw, and we want to move each of the images to the right category. So if animal equals cat, then you will move the image here, which is stored in the image name, to the cat folder. If, if this is not met, then it checks. If animal equals dog, then move the image into the dog folder. And if this is not met either, please look if animal equals bird, and then you will move this image to bird. In, the, in our case, they will, all the images will be moved, but if none of these conditions will be met, the image will stay wherever it is right now, so it wouldn't be moved at all. So you guys can run this and actually look if the files are actually moved by doing ls in the images uh, directory with a star, which will then list all the subdirectories in these images. And if you see that, please raise your hand. Okay, so hopefully this has happened, but if not, don't worry. Um, we can do it later. So we can now check if everything worked. We can use our find command.gpg, and if this works, you will see that each of the um, GPG images are in the right folder. So that's great. Everything moved to the right subfolder. Um, but you might be thinking, oh my God, do I have to do this every day? And no, the answer is not. You can actually write a script, which is a little program that will do something for you. So you can repeat the same operation multiple times and you can reuse it. So what is a script? So like in a movie or in a play, a script tells the actor what they want, what they do and in which sec sequence they should do it. So the computer does the same. It has a file that, tell, that contains all the commands in the order that the computer has to do it, and then it will, do, it will follow the script and do all the actions that you want to do. So now we can create our first script. So for that, we can open a text editor, and in our case, we will use nano. So if you do nano um, first script does sh, if you could do that, this will open a text editor where you will see it will be a file. And if you, you see that, just raise your hand. It will be an empty window. Okay, there is some hands raised up. Great. Um, so the first thing we want to do it is to tell the, pro, the, tell the computer in which language it, we are actually writing our script. And this is done by what is called a shivang. And a shivang, it contains a hash and an exclamation mark 
which is indicating, okay, this is a she bank and the computer will say, okay, when I see that, then they tell me in which language this script is written in. And the first thing we you need to type now is our Shivang, which is actually we are using Bash. So if you type this within the nano editor and raise your hand when you have it. Great, so I've seen some hands. So now let's continue. So we want to write a script that will write, that will print hello world. So how do we tell Bash to print something in screen? For that, we can use the echo command. So now if you write in a new line, echo hello world, um, and when you have this written to get out of the nano editor, you will press Control and X together, and then it will ask you, would you like to save the file? And you say yes by pressing the Y, and then it, and then you have to press or Enter to confirm that you want to save it as FairScript.sh. And if you have done that, please raise your hands. Okay, I see a lot of hands raising. Perfect. Okay, so now that's it. You've made your first script. Now you're a programmer, so you can go wild. Um, so now how do you run your script? So the way of running it, you just do, you run this bash dot slash first script dot sh. And if you do that, you will see hello world printed for you. And if you see that, please raise your hands. Yay, great. So now we want to change this script to do something a bit more complicated and actually print your name after hello. So our script look like this. And now we want to use variables um, which are that are passed as arguments to the script. And what are arguments? And this is a value that you provide the script and it's used to perform a task. In Bash, um, the arguments that are passed in the command line are written as, as in here, so S1, S2, and so S1 will be the first, S2 the second, S3 the third, and so on. Um, so if we go now back to our script, we can actually change the print message so it gets one variable. Um, so, okay, so we want to pass it our name. So now we're gonna have a variable that is called name equals S1, written like this. And this is what it's telling it is get the first argument passed in the command line and save it as the variable name. And we now we want to print hello name instead of hello world. So what we could do is to change world by the variable S uh, name. So if you write that and then you save it and then you run it in this way, you should see that it actually tells you hello Ida. And you can try it with your name. It doesn't have to be Ida. It can be any other uh, thing here. It, so if you see that, please raise your hands. Great. Um, so this was the first script, and now you know how to you do a script. Of course, it, will, it won't be as simple as this, but you have a few basics. So now we want to give you a, a best practices when coding, um, and this is uh, good because then everyone can understand your code, even yourself. So. First of all, you should comment your code. And to do that, it's good to add short descriptions in your script so we know what it's doing. So if we, if we see here, we have now added comments 
And if you like the first one, we are saying, okay, we are reading name from the positional arguments, number one. So, and then we are printing hello and then the specified variable into screen. The second thing that you should do is always give the variables within your script informative names. So if, if something is storing a number and its number corresponds to a specific value that it's, I don't know, endogenous DNA, save it as endogenous DNA equals blah. Don't put um, variable one equals blah, because then when you look at it, you cannot easily see what this variable one is corresponding to. Um, also, all the bash variables is safer to write them like this. It's easier for you to see what is a variable and what is not. And it also, it ensures that they are being interpreted correctly by Bash. And then keep your code simple. So try to simplify your code instead of having thousands of lines like we, see, we saw in the example of ref and cut. It's much better if you just have a parameter expansion, a single line of code is easy to read, it's easy to interpret and everyone can look at it and find and understand the logic behind it. And another thing that it makes your code simple is also avoid duplicating code. For this, there is, for example, if you, are, you have um, something that has to be run multiple times, you can create functions and other stuff, but this is something that you will learn as you code. Also very important is to add a help message. So if we wanted to add a help message in our basic script, you will run it like this. And basically, if, if in this case, if you type dash dash help or dash uh, h, which is a normal way of actually printing the help message, it will actually tell you what the script is doing. Um, yeah, and it also helps you to go back to your old scripts and actually remember the options, what, uh, what arguments do they need, and it will make, me, make it much easier if you have actually put a help message in it. Um, yeah, some debugging, so try your code outside the script before you're putting in a script, so to see if it works. Do a lot of print statements, that's what we've done in every step before we actually move files or, or modify the file. We always check that it's actually doing what we want, so this is a good way of doing it. And when you write the script, do it by functional parts, which basically means Think what you want to do and then write it down or do a little diagram or whatever works best for you of which steps you have to do and in which order. And then you just write it as it is. And then you just go through it in your, uh, in your script and try to simplify your code until you have a nice code that you are happy with. And if you're stuck and your code is not writing, a good thing to do is to go and talk to someone else and explain your problem. This is what a lot of um, by, like uh, programmers have a rubber ducky where they explain their problem to the duck. And once you are talking it out, then you it helps you realize what things are failing and how could you actually do the code for the task that you want. It, the problems become much more obvious. So always talking to someone is a good practice when you are stuck. Um, so you can write the same task in multiple ways. So try to find what is more efficient, so what it runs faster, or that is more readable and understandable for other people. Or you could write a code that is both very efficient and very readable, and then you are in the perfect spot. But you can also sometimes write a code that is neither. And well, it does its function, so you might be happy with it and just continue using it. Um, and I guess what the most important bit is to practice, practice, practice. And the more you practice, the more you learn and the more efficient and more readable your code becomes, or not. So now we would like to do a quiz, which I think we have enough time to do. Remember, you have more slides, you have Mr. Collins and stuff? Um, I had the task, but... Um, well, maybe we... Explain the task, then I'll go to the quiz, because I would share my screen. Okay, so if you guys want, there is a task after this that you could do, and you can write your own script to make extra subdirectories within of the categories that we've done that have a description of the image, like artwork, baby, funny, historical, normal. So at the end, you will have a bit more organized your directories. 
Um, you can do this on your own time. I leave you on the on the scripts uh, on the on the slides, and you can send it to me or Theseus, and we will actually um, correct it. Um, so, just to summarize, in these slides, we have learned how to find your files, what is a for loop, what are regular expression, and how useful they are, what how to rename multiple files with rename, what are while loops. Um, how you can modify a file with set, um, what are um, conditionals um, and if statements. And you actually wrote your first script, so now you are a programmer. So go ahead and program and don't be, a, don't be afraid of doing so. Um, so another good thing is actually to, run out, to clean up your directories once you finish. So you could delete everything from today by doing remove minus r because it's a directory and everything. Um, you can do it now or wait for later, but this should be done once you have done something and you know that it's sort of done, you should um, remove your temporary files as much as possible. Um, so yeah, as I said, this is a very reduced version. That's why it might have been a bit too much for these um, two hours, but uh, if you go to berbonsbash.github.io, you will find all of the slides of the of a much extended course and all the walkthroughs where it has more explanation and you can read through them whenever you want in your free time. And we just want to say thank you to some a few people. So Stefan Schiffels actually provides support and advice on cluster setup for our initial BBB runs. James here hasn't teach today, but he normally also teaches with me and Theseus. We also want to say thank you to Sandra, um, which I put the umlaut in the wrong way, in the wrong place. Um, but we want to thank Sandra because she did the wonderful images of ourselves. Uh, Google, because it, ta it taught us everything that we know. Um, I think this, this is for James, so Giffy and Tenor, because they like to put GIFs everywhere. Um, and then fontawesome.com, because it make our icons and, and the logo 